Hi everyone, today I have my first acrylic gouache tutorial. I'm using Holbein acrylic gouache. These are the seven colors that I initially bought and I'll have them listed down below. You can also use traditional gouache to follow along with this tutorial. It's mostly the same. I'll point out in the tutorial any part where you have to be a little more careful using traditional gouache, but for the most part, it's pretty much the same. And before we jump into the tutorial, I just wanna let you guys know that I've launched a Patreon where I'll be uploading weekly new real-time painting tutorials focusing mostly on gouache and some acrylic gouache landscapes. Today's tutorial is already on Patreon in real time. There's about two hours of real-time painting footage along with three other tutorials that I've already uploaded on there which are all in real time. They're all around two to two and a half hours long. If you enjoy my real-time tutorials and you'd like to paint along with me then I'll leave a link down below where you can check out my patreon and also on my website where I've listed out the available tutorials thank you guys for the support and I hope to see you on there I'm using just two brushes today a round brush in size 6 and a quarter inch flat brush although I would recommend using maybe a half inch flat brush these are the only two brushes that I've dedicated to acrylic gouache so far since I want to keep them separate from my traditional gouache brushes I've taped down some paper with masking tape and I'm using a glass palette. I also have two jars of water and I'm using a paper towel to dry my brushes. You'll also want to have a spray bottle on hand for misting your paints. I'm starting with the colors ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, burnt umber and white and using my flat brush I'm just mixing up the color of the sky which is a grayish blue. So I'm mixing cerulean blue with a lot of white and I'm adding a touch of burnt umber just to tone down the blue a little so it's not so bright. I'll also have the reference photo linked down below so you can see what I'm working with. Since I'm using acrylic gouache, I try to work a little bit faster since once it's dry, I can't reactivate the paint. So if I wanna try and get smooth blends in the sky, I need to work with the paint while it's still wet on the paper. That's why I recommend using a slightly larger flat brush as it's easier and faster to cover the sky. The brush I was using was a little bit small and did take me a little longer to paint in the entire sky. To create texture in the sky, I'm just varying the amount of white and amount of blue and burnt umber in the paint mixture. And I only use cerulean blue for the sky. I did use a bit of ultramarine blue at one point, but I didn't like the shade of blue it gave me. So I prefer to use a cool blue like cerulean blue for the sky. I also did do a quick sketch before starting this painting just so I know how much room I have for everything. After I finished painting in the sky, I put some yellow on my palette and I also used a spray bottle just to mist my paints. I misted them really regularly throughout this painting because I was worried that the acrylic gouache would dry out and I wouldn't be able to reactivate it. So I definitely used my spray bottle more than I usually do when I'm using traditional gouache. Now I'm mixing a bluish green for the distant mountains. So I'm using cerulean blue with a touch of yellow and also some burnt umber to tone it down. And I also added in more white as well because at first it was a little bit too dark. So there's about three layers of distant mountains in this painting. This is the layer that's furthest away, so it's the lightest. So I mix in a lot more white so that it's a lot lighter and so it looks further away. And we're also going to blur out the edges to give it more of a hazy look. So to blur out the edges, I wash off my brush and then I dry it off so that it's only a little bit damp. And using a clean brush, I just go in and I start to lightly blend out the edges while the paint is still wet so it can spread across the paper. Now I'm mixing the second layer of distant mountains. So I'm just using the same mixture but making it a little bit darker by adding a bit more cerulean blue into it. And then I'm testing it out on the paper and I decide to add in a bit more burnt umber so that it's not so vibrant of a color. And I repeat the same steps by washing off my brush, drying it off, and then going in with a clean brush to again blur out the edges. 
Then I mix in even more blue and burnt umber to mix a darker bluish green and I paint that in for the layer that's closest to us. I also go in with my round brush and I use the tip of the brush to paint in a hint of a tree line along the closest mountains because this one isn't as blurred out since it's closer to us so we can see the details a bit more closely. Now we can move on to blocking in the road and for that I'm mixing a blue grey. So instead of using black and white to mix grey, I'm using ultramarine blue and burnt umber because that way I can control the amount of blue in the mixture and I can push it towards more of a blue grey. Then I add in white to lighten it and I just block in the entire road. I'm able to still use the paint on my palette because I've been spraying it with water so it's not drying out. Now I want to block in where the trees go and for that I'm just mixing a really dark green. So I'm mixing black with a little bit of yellow which is my favourite way to mix a natural olive green. But in this case I'm mixing a lot more black than yellow. And I just block in where the trees go so I have a foundation later. After I finish blocking in the trees, then I work on blocking in the sides of the roads and for that I just pick out colours that I can see since we're just laying down a base layer first and we'll come back later and paint in the details. So I'm just trying to block in the white of the paper for now. So I painted in a bit of green, I also mixed a bit of orange using primary magenta and lemon yellow and I painted some of that in and also mixed it with a bit of green just so I could get some smooth blends between the two colours. Here I'm just mixing up some burnt umber with white and just blocking in the side with a little bit of light brown. And after that then I go back into some of the green paint for the mountains from before and I just fill in some of the gaps that are there because I want to make sure there's no white gaps on the paper at all. Now going back into the dark green mixture that I used to block in the trees, I'm using a round brush and I'm painting on a hint of a tree line again on the very far distant trees. After that I go ahead and I paint in all of the trees. This step did take me a while to do because I like to paint it very precisely and my brush has a really fine tip so I can paint all the little details. So it's up to you if you want to paint it a bit more painterly so it doesn't take you as long to paint in each individual tree. I found it was helpful to paint in the tree trunks first so I knew the positioning of all the trees and then to go in and paint on all the branches and the leaves. To help create a sense of depth in this painting, you want to make sure that your trees are slanting downwards. So that means the trees that are further away are getting shorter and shorter. So that way it feels like the road is disappearing into the distance along with the trees and the mountain. This is just the first layer in the trees. So we're using a really dark base. I'm just using the same black and yellow mixture to paint it in and then we'll go in and start to highlight the trees. So here I've mixed up a light green using 
blue and yellow and a little bit of black as well and then I've added in more white so that it's lighter and the light source is coming from the left hand side so I'm highlighting towards the left hand side of each of the trees for the faraway trees you don't have to be too detailed because they are very far away so you can just roughly highlight the left hand side and then for the closer trees I start to do the same thing I'm focusing on highlighting the left hand side of the trees I also don't highlight every single tree evenly some trees that are behind other ones I leave it more in shadow this is the second layer for the trees after this we'll also go in with the third final layer where we'll have even brighter highlights so to make the trees pop even more I'm now mixing up the brightest highlights, so I'm just mixing more white into the green mixture and I'm a bit more selective with which areas I highlight now. I'm really concentrating on those areas that are more on the far left side and is higher up on each of the trees as that's where the light is reaching. I also vary the highlight color because it's not just all one shade of green so here I'm mixing more of a warm orange green so I mixed in some primary magenta and yellow to make orange and I add that to the mixture so it's just a bit more of a warmer olive green highlight so up until this point I don't think there's much of a difference between using acrylic gouache and traditional gouache if I was using traditional gouache I would have followed the same steps as I have now so there should be no real difference between which gouache you're using Once I finish painting the trees, I work on the sides of the road again. First I use the dark green mixture just to fix up the base of some of the trees and I also try to elevate the side of the road a bit off the road so I paint in a dark green line just along the edge. Then I go back into my orange-ish brown mixture and I paint on a second layer. If you're using traditional gouache, potentially your first layer might have been a little bit sheer so with the second layer you can just make it a bit more opaque and you can also start to flesh out some of the details. I'm trying to just create some textures along the side so I'm trying to create some grass like textures and I even use my finger to blend out some of the paint so that it's not so harsh and it helps to just create some natural textures. Now I'm using a dark green mixture to paint on some shadows that are cast from trees that are not within this painting so it's further on the left hand side and we can't see it in this painting but there are some shadows cast from the trees there since the light source is coming from the left hand side and then I'm filling in some of the shadows cast from the trees towards the back as well and later when we go back to fix up the road we'll also paint shadows from the trees casting across the road I repeat the same process on the other side of the road. Here I'm just mixing in some more primary magenta and yellow into the green mixture 
just to make it a bit more orange-ish brown and I'm just carving out some of the details on the side of the road. I also try to paint in the direction that the ground is slanting in. For example, the trees are a little bit elevated off the road so I try to paint the side of the road as though it's slanting upwards. Now I can move on to the final part of the painting which is just to flesh out a bit more details in the road. First I just fixed up any parts that weren't completely even and then I'm mixing up a blue green for the road so I used cerulean blue mixed with a bit of yellow to push it towards green and I tone it down with some burnt umber and I'm just painting it on mostly on the right hand side. Then on the left hand side I also mix in a bit more white into the mixture and then I use a bit of water to thin it down and I paint it on the road and then use my finger to blend it out a little. I also use a clean wet brush to blend it out and that way I'm just trying to create some natural textures on the road just so that it's not so perfectly smooth. I also paint on two white lines on either side of the road and if you are using traditional gouache this is where you want to be a bit more careful to not pick up the paint underneath by reactivating it with too much water so you want to make sure your gouache is nice and thick so you can lay it on quite opaquely. For the yellow line that runs down the center of the road I decided to use my permanent yellow deep in the Windsor Newton designer squash since I don't have a warm yellow in my acrylic gouache and I thought it would be difficult to mix with my lemon yellow and primary magenta since they're both cool colors so I'm instead using this shade of yellow to paint in that line in the center because I feel like it's the perfect yellow that I want I mixed it with a little bit of white and I made a few mistakes with the positioning of the line but I just went back and covered it up and redid some parts and you also want to make sure that as the dotted line recedes further and further away they get shorter and smaller and also closer together. Now I'm painting on the shadows on the road that are cast from the trees on the left hand side so I'm just mixing up some green which is the same shade of green that we used to paint some of the highlights on the trees and I painted across the middle of the road and also along the side where it's white I also mix up a bit more of a gray that's a little bit darker and I continue the shadow along there
to help bring out the white lines that we painted before I paint a darker line next to it just so the white pops a bit more and the very last step is just to fix up the bottom of the tree so I'm painting in a few tree trunks I'm starting with a really dark burnt umber mixture and then I go in with a lighter mixture and I highlight the left hand side of the tree trunks and after that I just paint in a few more leaves just to cover up some of the tree trunks and just to join it all together and that's it for this painting I hope you guys enjoyed this acrylic wash tutorial and I hope you'll give it a go and if you would like to follow along with me in real time you can find this full length tutorial on my patreon along with three other tutorials that I already have on there and I will be uploading weekly new gouache tutorials where I have a full voiceover of me talking while I paint so I can explain more in detail all my color choices and everything I'm doing. Hope you all have a wonderful Christmas and are staying safe through this holiday season. I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye!